Hi friends, today I wanted to bring you a super fun project that you can do with your kids here at the end of the school year to wrap it up with something fun. So this is stop motion video, but instead of all the technology, all you need is Google Slides. So let's jump into the inspiration video, which has almost 67 million views because it is amazing. So everything you see on the screens is going on in real time. So all of the devices that they have that they're moving around and working with, they all press play at the same time, which is what makes this so super fun. So as I said, this video, um, and I'm going to link it below for you, it's just a YouTube video, was our inspiration for this project. So we wanted the computer to line up like this, and the students have stop motion um, animation going from computer to computer to computer. So I saw on Twitter on Conti Classroom posted about the red ball challenge and I thought that would be a great way to introduce the kids, get them their creative juices flowing, like just thinking um, a simple way that they could just start uh, to manipulate the objects and just figure out how to actually do the stop motion. Red ball challenge is a great way to start this. So the next couple of videos will show you what the red ball challenge looks like at the end once the students have done everything they're supposed to do with the stop motion. So just like with the inspiration video, we have the red ball uh, bouncing from each computer to computer to computer. And again, they all started this all in real time. They all started the videos at the same time. So that video is middle schoolers and this next one is high schoolers and I just wanted you to see that the activity has a wide range audience, uh, all the way from middle school to high schoolers. They all loved it. So um, you could do this with any class. So because it is real time and everybody starts the videos at the same time, this is the hardest part for them to understand is the blank slides that you need um, for each computer to hold a spot for all of the other slides that are coming before it. So like computer one is just going to have their 25 animations. Computer two is going to have to have blank ones that will hold the spot for that first computer's 25 slides. So computer two will have the 25 blanks and then it'll have the 25 animations and it just goes on from there. So computer three will need to have 50 uh, blank ones and then their animation and then 75 and the 25 um, animations. So I would suggest with a template they go ahead and just man manipulate the uh, red bouncy ball however they want. Um, the template is going to be linked for you and then they just move that ball. They can do whatever they want to it um, and then add in those blank slides at the end. That's what I would suggest doing. So this template will come with 25 slides for you um, with a red bouncy ball on each uh, slide and then they just make um, the ball move wherever on the screen that they want um, so that it bounces. One thing I would think about is the transition from one computer to the other so they want to make sure that one um, wherever it goes out on one computer it comes in at the same place on the next computer just so that it looks cohesive like it's really bouncing from computer to computer. So once the group has their bouncy balls um, placed all on their slides where they want them then everyone is going to publish their slides to the web and that is so simple so all you do is say file and then publish to the web and then you're going to choose every second and then do not check either of those boxes. You want to just have every second, no boxes, and then hit publish. And then that's going to bring up, are you sure? You say yes. And then it's very important to copy this link right here. And then you are going to open up a new tab and paste that link in, but don't hit enter yet. Once you paste in your link, you'll see at the end it says 1000. That's the milliseconds that it's going the speed. And you want the backspace that so it's just on 100. And then everybody is going to hit the three dots, say autoplay, play, and then everyone will play it at the same time. So they like to count down like three, two, one, play. And then it should bounce across the computers. 
and now they're ready for a big project. So this is the one I did just for the tutorial so that you can kind of just get an idea of what happens. So that would be my first uh, video for the first computer and then this would be my second computer. And then here's what it would look like if it were on the computers going from one computer to the next. And this also shows you how you need to have those blank slides. So like the second computer has those blank slides for the first one to be doing its animations. And then its animation starts after those blank slides. So then the next video is going to be some student work. I think they did such a good job on this. Um, the little penguin shooting the basketball. And so it's just the background, it's just um, clip art, and then it's just tiny movements. Like that's all it is. That's all stop motion is, is just tiny movements. Like those old creepy Christmas uh, clay movies. It's just that. Um, so the first thing that I would say to do is just find a great background that you like. Um, and then, so I liked this one. A trick I want to show you is, I love this picture, but I knew I was going to use my Bitmoji. So there's a website called cleanup.pictures. And all you have to do is just take your picture and drag it over onto the space. And then it has like a brush. It can do different sizes. And then you just swipe over the part that you want to get rid of. And it takes a few times swiping over it. And it magically makes whatever you are brushing over disappear. It is so cool. So if you have an image that you want to use, but there's something in it that you don't like, then this is a great website to, to take away um, the objects of the picture that you don't like. And then you can just download the picture and it's ready for your background. So a couple of different ways you can put your background picture on. You can um, insert, just insert the picture and then uh, resize it yourself to match your um, slide size. Or you can, and that's one way, uh, you can also do it as an actual background. So you hit background, you can choose your image. You can also search an image from here, choose something from your drive, or choose um, the picture that we did. So any of those options work. So once you have your picture chosen, then you just say, um, you just, you highlight it and say insert it. You browse here. You can find one of your pictures that you've downloaded. Um, and then once you find it, you just insert it. You can add this to the theme. And so that would, every single slide you start would have this background on it. And the background doesn't move. You can do whatever you want. And uh, unlike the clip art, it doesn't move when you touch it. So that's a good option. But it does distort it sometimes, depending on your image. So you just need to be careful of that. So continuing with the background, the most important thing, I think, um, I wanted to have like some twinkly lights, stars, shooting stars, something just to kind of add a little pizzazz to my background because it kept, felt a little static. So I um, went to the very dependable, always find something cool, Giphy um, site and got me a couple of little stars to put in. And then um, I just played around with them until they were kind of spaced where I thought they would look good. And then next is the fun part. So you have your clip art that you're actually going to be moving across the screen. So with stop motion video, that's all it is, is usually just like thousands of pictures taken and you put them together and they make a video and you're just making tiny, tiny little movements. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, and I recommend, like, I started off with my background, what all I wanted, and then I had my clip art. And then I'm just duplicating the slide each time and moving the clip art a little bit. And then duplicate that slide and move the clip art a little bit. And then duplicate that slide and move the clip art a little bit. That way, the clip art is where you left it when you're making the moves. So you can kind of see where you are as you're moving across the screen. You could have multiple clip arts. Um, I just kept this one simple for the tutorial, um, but you could have more than one thing. If you remember in the penguin example, the kids had a penguin and they also had uh, the basketball. Also at the end of theirs, they had the um, basketball goal actually moved when they um, dunked the ball in there. So you're just making tiny little movements. Um, some quick shortcuts for you on the keyboard. You could um, alt, plus left arrow can rotate it counterclockwise a little bit, just nudges it a little bit. 
and then um, the other way, do the Alt plus the right arrow to ro rotate clockwise. Your arrow keys nudge all up and down, like whichever way you move the arrow keys, you can nudge up, down, left, or right. Or you can also right click and do all these movements too. You can reorder things, move something to the front, move something to the back. Uh, but these keyboard uh, shortcuts I love just when you're trying to move things just a little bit. Because sometimes when you try to move them by holding and dragging, they'll move like crazy. So these are just some little shortcuts to help you um, just nudge the little things because that's what stop motion is, is just small movements. It is definitely tedious, but the smaller the movement, uh, the more realistic it's going to look, the more animated it's going to look as it goes across the screen. So also just think about size, rotating, like all these little movements can make a difference in the animation that you're doing for your stop motion. So uh, here's the second screen. That would be the second screen for the one that I'm doing. I'm finishing him up right now and then I'm going to show you what it would all look like. So um, once I've published and done all the things, this would be, that's my first one again. I showed this at you at the beginning. just want to show you again, refresh your mind, and then um, this would be my second. So then just like with the red ball challenge, you will want to add in blank slides for um, each computer. So computer two would need blank slides for the first computer's uh, animation. And then the third would need the blank slides for the first and second computer's animation and then so forth. So however many ones you have. And then you're just going to publish again, uh, just like we did with red ball challenge. So file, um, publish to web, choose every second don't check anything, say publish, uh, say okay once it asks you the second time, and then make sure again that you copy that link, open a new tab, paste, but do not uh, hit enter, backspace so you can go to 100 instead of 1000, and then you are ready to play. And then everybody's going to set their computers up next to each other, uh, and then everybody go full screen, and then autoplay, play at the same time, and you have just created stop motion animation using Google Slides. So I hope that you love this. Um, the kids really got into it, uh, making their backgrounds, making their stories that they um, did with this. Uh, they had a really good time with it and came up with some really creative things. So I hope that you want to try this in your classroom. And if you do, leave comments. Let me know how it goes. I would love to see some things that you come up with too.